Odell here again. I'm with one of my favorite humans on the whole planet, Meg. Uh, and we're here for Wellness Posse Wednesday. This is week two, and I was super excited. We did a little meal prep cooking class today at Meg's house, and I said, hey, girl, why don't you sit down and share with the Wellness Posse what you do and how good you are? <laughs> and she was like, okay, mm, I've never done a Facebook Live video before, so I'm a little nervous. First time. <laughs> But she's being brave and amazing, and so I'm super excited to kind of share with y'all what Meg does. She has an amazing organization called Women Lifting Women. She's throwing this really great wellness women's um, conference in the fall, which I am a part of, and some of our other favorite people, Colette Davenport, and a few other people. We'll get into the details later. Uh -huh. um, but first off, let's just do a little introduction. Who are you? What do you do? Well... <laughs> I haven't had to do this often. Um, so yeah, my name is Meg Stanley, and I am the founder and creator of Women Lifting Women. Women Lifting Women is a community of women who are, um, I would say, committed to disappearing a conversation of uh, competition and comparison amongst women, and really about like lifting each other up and supporting each other and creating a community of abundance like whoever you are whatever you're up to like we will support you and give you a platform for you to shine your most authentic self ah, something like that I yeah. mean come the fuck on who doesn't love that so we're just gonna go through a few questions Meg me and Meg went through these a little earlier but we're gonna kind of break down you know kind of what I normally talk about with people so sum up and I love this sum up kind of your <laughs> your wellness philosophy in uh, you know a sentence or two, kind of what is your general kind of life wellness philosophy? Yeah, um, love the fuck out of yourself. Like love yourself hard, and um, while you're doing that, teach other people like this is what it looks like to love yourself. I love that because we are really inspirations to each other, and when you see strength and love in other people, um, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. um, just like anything else all that is it's all about energy and so if that's what you're putting out into the world you're just creating more of it Love it. Um, so what was your path to get you here I know that um, just like all of us on this wellness path that you you've struggled like most people to come to a place where you can love yourself and kind of discover that path what, what was what did that look like for you yeah a hundred percent and I just am now like this morning I woke up, you know, and I look at Instagram and the first thing I read was like our wounds are like what we're actually, is our gift to the, ourselves and the world. And so what I would say is like, I had a really, well, I really struggled with just accepting myself as I am. And um, what led me to the path of where I am now is that journey of like learning to love myself, accept myself for everything that I am, for everything that I'm not and really appreciate what I bring to the table instead of being like, oh, I should be like this. Um, this is what I should do. But like getting to know myself and like learning to love myself. Yeah. I know that you had said, and I know a lot of people struggle with this, is figuring out how much uh, what you're doing is outside influence versus kind of internal and kind of how you struggled with that. Could you go into a little more detail about that? Kind of especially when you were struggling to find yourself, but... You know, yeah. You know? Well, and I'll share just a little part of my story is most of you who've known me mo all my life know that I'm adopted. And some of you who just have met me like in my adult life don't really know that. Um, but yeah, being adopted kind of was like, I don't, there was like a disconnect with like my value and like um, thinking that I wasn't worth like I was looking to other people to tell me what I was worth. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I did not know what I was worth. So of course, the outside, like, really influenced how I felt about myself. Mm -hmm. And the last two years, I've really discovered through like self development like, programs like Landmark or even uh, personal coaching with Colette. I really learned um, to listen to myself rather than listen to anyone else. And the truth is, is that you are the only expert in your life. Like, everybody else can give you advice, opinions, what works for them, but you're the expert of yourself. 
So your job is literally to get to know yourself so well that you know what is truth for you and what is not. Yeah. Amen, sister. <laughs> um, what do you What do you kind of wish, um, kind of in this wellness professional field? What What conversation do you wish was happening that you don't really hear happening? You know, what What are kind of those things that you wish other wellness professionals were talking to their clients about, or sharing, or be more vulnerable about themselves? Yeah, I think what I think I don't know. We talked about whatever we talked about <laughs> earlier, and now I'm like. Why don't I remember what we talked about? Um, what's coming to mind is just the true authenticity um, about like our struggles, like mm -hmm. what we're struggling with, like how we got to be where we are. Like all you ever see is this picture perfect Instagram of like who this wellness professional is. Like looking on the outside, I look at Allison and I'm like, wow, what a rock star. She has a killer body, a killer mindset. She's like so fun. But when I actually heard this, her story, that's what connected me to her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to reach out to her because I relate. Because mm -hmm. so many times you cannot relate to that Instagram photo. Because mm -hmm. you're just like, that's not who I am. So like the real conversation is that um, the outside may look really great, but the inside is not. And it starts from the inside. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be like this physical appearance like of like perfection the inside is where it needs to start completely yeah and i i think we as a society only give like the picture mm -hmm. and not the whole like journey struggle story of like what it is on the inside because you can look healthy on the outside but you know we all know that's <laughs> true and yeah that's the conversation and that's really why i started wellness bossy wednesday was I want to have the real conversation with wellness professionals because we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Is so many of us get into this business because we've struggled with body dysmorphic disorder, with eating disorders, with not having self love, with self harm, all these different things. We get into this business to fix other people so oh, they don't yeah. have to deal with their own shit. But a lot of times, if you haven't actually dealt with your stuff and you're not being transparent, Number one, it makes you sicker because you're going into shame hole. You know, you yeah. can't oh, you yeah. can't share with anybody that you're struggling because everybody's holding you to the standard. And then at the same time, you're probably projecting onto your client and not really wanting to connect to them at that level because that brings up your own all shit. your yucky. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> I'm just gonna. I cannot relate to you and your shitty stuff. <laughs> or like, okay, let's just pretend we're perfect and then like go through like uh, P. Terry's and like binge eat in the secret. You know, like yeah. no, like this is like stuff that I really am dealing with. You yeah. know, like completely getting real. But that is that is what relates us to people. That is why we can really connect to to clients and everybody. You can come, come out. Sorry, sorry. You can say hi. Yeah, you can come out there. Tanya. <laughs> Roommate Tanya. Um, yeah, but that is, I loved how she just said, the, as scary as that is as a professional to actually be transparent with your client about your struggles, it is what will endear your clients and give you real connection and allow you to really change people's behavior because they feel like they can relate to you and you're not some fitness superhero that they could never be like ever, ever, ever. <laughs> yeah, like the the what shame actually does is like have you feel disconnected and like mm -hmm. you can't share like your truest self with people. Like shame keeps us trapped. Yeah. And I think that like having these discussions like unleashes that um feeling of like hiding and having to pretend to be something you're not. Yeah. Um, what are kind of your top three things that people could do that you think that can make them healthier and happier? Yeah, number one, I would say, dude, meditate. I don't always practice meditation. 100%, I'm like, you know, like, when I find time. But what I will say 100%, what I've noticed, when I take the time to sit still, be quiet, that's when I really hear what's the truest for me. And all that, like, inside, like, self, like, that tape that plays through your head that's just, like, all the lies and all the, like, crap that you're just, like, so used to feeding, well, myself, it just stops that. And then I can really hear what's true for me. And I'm like, okay, Meg, you know, you're just being silly right now. I get that you're really scared, but, you know, that's not going to keep me from doing what's real, like, what's there for me to do. Yeah. So, 
That's a great one. That's the next one. Um, and then be mindful. I like I always something Colette and I actually worked on last week was getting specific. And then once I'm like specific in like my goals, like for my finances, for my career, for like um, money, stuff like that, then I can like get be really mindful for like what I'm bringing in, like what thoughts am I bringing in, what food am I putting into my body, like, um, and therefore like treat myself the way that I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And then number three, I would say don't be afraid to say no and don't feel guilty for saying no. Um, also on the lines of being specific, it kind of like narrows things down mm -hmm. so that you have the freedom to say no. Like for me, I know Allison and I both, like this we is our trait that we struggle with. <laughs> yeah. Like we just want to be involved in everything because it sounds so fun and I just want to be a part of it and I want to support you in what you're doing. But what I realize is I spread myself way too thin, then I become overwhelmed and then I'm not really connected to my why or what I'm really doing this for. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, don't feel bad about saying no. You know, I heard once, um, this is funny, my old pastor would say, say no to good for great. And I think that always just, it's just something I always just like remember. Cause I'm like, you know, like this may be good, but is it great? Yeah. And you can say no to good yeah. for great. Yeah. And we'd also on that same line is one of the things we really connected on is we are both people pleasers. We want to make people happy. And a lot of that comes from our background. I know when I was little, there was a lot of tension in my family and mm -hmm. I was the happy, very sweet kid. Every, like I never did anything wrong and I was always happy and upbeat and that became my outward persona and I never thought that I could not be that. So I did everything. Let's just try to make it happy. And I know that Meg has always tried to kind of, Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Like what can I do to like bring peace and bring happiness and like, just, you know, like, I want to make everybody happy. Like, truth. I love doing that. It makes me feel good. That's just, Sometimes like, the on, truth. The, on the detriment on our first meeting, it was, I'm making everybody happy to a detriment of myself. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people struggle with that. Especially, it seems like a lot of moms struggle with that. They're putting everybody else's priorities, and then you're like, well, what about me? And you're just kind of letting yourself fall apart. And we had to have a real conversation about... Like, you are your number one priority. Oh, and if you don't hungry. make yourself your number one priority, nobody else is making you priority. Yeah. And, yeah, and going back to, like, your personal job in this world is to love the crap out of yourself because no one else is going to love you like you love yourself. Nobody knows your needs or your wants other than yourself like you do. Mm -hmm. And, like, nobody can give you that. Yeah. You just have to. Like, this is what this all two years has led up to me, like, really just... You know, and I got feedback from, like, people in my life, and I asked them what was the most challenging thing about me, and, you know, my ex-boyfriend and my roommate both were like, you don't take care of yourself, or you don't love yourself the way that you love other people, and I was like, what? And then I, like, got to the level of, like, oh, wow, I'm really, like, doing stuff for other people, but I'm not doing it for myself, yeah. and what I realized is, like, that's my responsibility is to do that for myself, and then everything else just, like, flows outwardly. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, wellness myth, and we kind of touched on this a second ago, but what do you think the biggest wellness myth is? Well, that if you look good on the outside, that you're like good on the inside. Yeah, fuck you, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, like, just I mean, it's wonderful, on. but let's stop with the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of healthy people, or they look healthy, they got the abs and all that good stuff going on, like the stuff that I'm like, oh, yeah. But on the inside, you know, is it healthy? Are, I mean, is the mindset healthy? Like, yeah. Are they crying themselves to sleep at night? Are they not fucking their husband? Are they drinking wine alone? Are they secretly eating? Are they binging and purging? Are they working out and, you know, beating themselves up every day? Yeah, and I, I think, <laughs> I well, I think back to my fitness journey, and it, it all was driven by, like, this self-loathing. Like, I just needed to be somebody else. I just needed to be better, look a certain way. And, like, that's what drove me to, like, the health. Like, when I look back, the fittest I ever was, when I was, like, literally killing myself in the gym. And that wasn't loving towards myself either. E even though I looked really healthy and I looked, like, fabulous, it just, I was still, like, punishing myself mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah, and I think a lot of people struggle with that, that it's 
as we talked about, so aesthetic. Like health is so aesthetic as opposed to getting really actually emotional and soul driven of what does health look like. And for me, mine has been until I really actually did love myself, working out and everything else was such a fucking battle. I was like force me myself. Like I have to be on the stair mill for an hour. Yeah, it's a God. chore. It's a chore. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was this whole thing, and it's so weird when I got my mindset right, and I started being like, you know what? I love me, whether I'm a size four or I'm a size twelve, and but that gave me the freedom to make healthy choices because I wasn't like, I'm only gonna love myself if I'm eating healthy and I'm working out all the time because it's just too yeah. much pressure on yourself. You just say fuck it, and then you fall off the wagon, and then I'm stuffing Tostino's pizza in the mouth. <laughs> I, well, I up. love me a Tostino's pizza. Like, I'll just let you in a little secret. When shit hits the fan, Allison's buying Tostino's pizza and eating the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no. I splurged for a little more expensive. I like Via 313. That's my jam. Oh, that shit is good. <laughs> um, uh, but seriously, though, I think about that and I'm like, yeah. I, like, was driving myself into the ground. And w when I we talked about, like, I was... I'm, I hired Allie to like get my nutrition set, you know, like I was like, I'm out of control. I am like secretly binge eating and feeling really ashamed about it and hiding this from my roommates, from my trainers, from my friends. I, and on the outside I appeared to be like this very healthy person with, you know, occasional like, you know, but no, I was like completely hiding that. And what I'm learning now, it's like, man, like, I really just want my outside to match how awesome my inside is. Like, I'm a leader on the inside. I'm all these things, but the outside just isn't pairing with how I know I am to be on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, like, coming from this whole completely different mindset than how it used to be, where I was just, like, doing everything out of a sheer hate of, like, of myself. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, like, really being mindful of, like, what I'm putting in my body. And, and it's funny, it's like... I like text her and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize like eating healthy could be this yummy, really. Because I literally thought it was like chicken breast, broccoli, sweet potatoes. Please stop. Every day. Yeah. Maybe some rice. Yeah. But you know, like that was literally my meals instead of... And what did we make today? Um, spatchcock chicken uh -huh. with this like yummy <laughs> skin, crisp, like crispy skin uh -huh. and some like... Oh man, squash, which I really love with bell peppers mm -hmm. and some cabbage. Oh my Braised gosh. Cabbage with apples. And then we made um, chicken. I mean, chicken. We made some trout that I actually caught this weekend. What's on there? Um, with some green beans and tomatoes. Super easy. All stuff that Meg actually was like, because she, she called me and she said, I cannot cook. I'll, everything I make is disgusting, and I, the only healthy food I eat is so gross. And then I cook for her for a week, and she goes, what the hell? I know, right? I'll why is healthy food so good? Wife me up. <laughs> yeah. And so I came over today, and in two hours, we learned how to cook four things and everything she could do. In two hours, it was all done. She has all her food for the whole week. And it costs 50 bucks. 50 bucks in groceries. So don't you tell me you can't afford it or you don't have time. That's bullshit. Um... Why do you feel like people struggle with um, health and wellness so much? Why? Mm -hmm. Because they don't value themselves. Mm -hmm. Like we had a conversation earlier and I was like, you know, the real breakthrough came when I realized like I was eating garbage because that's how I like felt about myself. Like I did not love my body. So obviously not loving or valuing my body was not like... Of course I wasn't going to feed it stuff that would, like, maintain it and fuel it in a positive way. Like, I was just feeding myself garbage because I hated myself, you know? So, wait, what was the question again? No, why do people struggle? With yeah, that would be the struggle. I think that, and there's a lot of shame. Yeah. Like, just people are just scared to be real. Uh -huh. Like, it's scary yeah. to, like, be honest and, like, wonder if, like, people are going to accept you and love you. Even when you're being honest, like, about who you really are on the inside. And the, the reality is most people will. Yeah. If you're just really, if you're, if you're honest. And the people that won't, you'll find out real fast, and then you don't have to be around those mofos anymore. 
Audi, bye bye. Bye bye. So that's our main questions. Now we're going to go into a few rapid fire, which you have not heard yet. Oh, Ooh, fun. Okay, these are the fun ones. Uh, top three wellness people podcasts or books or anything like that. Oh, Who do you snap. love? Uh, okay, so Stupid Easy Paleo, mm-hmm. Steph Gaudreau. Amazing. Gaudreau. I, um, I always... We're like, friends. <laughs> yeah, so I love her. She's actually doing a women's strength summit right now this week. You can sign up for it. You can go to her page. Um, she has a po- podcast called Harder to Kill. We'll put this in the comments so mm-hmm. y'all can link to everything. And um, I love her. Like, I feel uh, very aligned with her soul. Like, just the stuff that she brings up. She talked last week about body shaming, and I was like, 100% get that. Um, so follow her. Um, even if you aren't paleo, like, she has some amazing things. The one thing I will say about paleo lifestyle, um, I don't 100% like follow the paleo book, but it's a very way, a uh, mindful way of eating. So, like, yeah, people eat more fruit, uh, more uh, vegetables and protein. There you yeah. go, stop eating junk. <laughs> And then and healthy fat. There you go. I, I mean, in general, that's paleo. Don't eat. Don't eat processed shit. Please don't even eat processed paleo shit. <laughs> I'll just give you that one. Eat real food. Yeah, real food. Um, and then uh, Lori Harder. I love, 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 love Lori Harder. I found um, a ton of um, people just through her podcast. She brings on the most amazing people. But. Um, her podcast is called Find Your Happiness, and it's all about self-love. So she um, markets herself as a self-love junkie, oh, and I love, love that. that. So everyone she brings on kind of has some kind of like um, knowledge on that. And then what I would say is like my homegirls here in Austin, Allison and Colette, like I love the things that they're talking about, saying, um, having conversations about. So, uh, I mean, that's my jam. Oh, love you too. <laughs> uh, what is your first and last, do you, do you have structure around your first and last 30 minutes of your day? My, you can just say no. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a structure that we're putting into place. Yes. And it's um, actually being intentional about my bedtime. Mm-hmm. So, how it's been is like, can I just stay up as long as my eyes will let me and then an exhaustion, I'll fall asleep. So what I've incorporated is like having a consistent bedtime and ooh, this like no TV, even though I like, don't even watch it, I'll like put it on just to hear it. Like my roommate Chris laughs at me because I love Bob's Burgers and that's like <laughs> my go-to. Okay, don't make the face Chris, but like literally I just have to hear some noise. But what I realized was um, I could put on a podcast, you know, because you can put it to like stop playing after this episode sleep timer yeah so i put on a podcast before i go to bed and just listen to it while i'm sleeping Mm -hmm. so yeah so you're not getting the blue light so just so for most people who don't know blue light which radiates from any kind of screen um really makes your brain turn on and really makes it hard for you to sleep so a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour prior to going to bed, if you can limit screen times, try not to keep your phones and your laptops in your bedroom. I know that's hard for most people. I use mine as an alarm clock, but it's impossible. But um, yeah, just trying to limit screens. And Meg has a thing because like some people, her, her schedule isn't consistent. So sometimes she has to be up super early and sometimes she can sleep in. Um, but trying to keep a consistent bedtime really does help with your rhythms and that controls everything from hormone levels um, to your energy levels. So it's try to keep consistent bedtimes even through the weekend if possible. It'll just help you if you struggle with sleeping in a world. It'll help. Yeah, and then the, oh, the first 30 minutes um, I like to spend in the, like with myself. Ah, Meditation, thought, journal. Um, what what would be ideal is if I actually wasn't rushing out the door and I woke up early enough to spend five minutes of like breath work, mm-hmm. meditation, just being really quiet, mm-hmm. and then five minutes of like journaling. Yeah, love those. Because then you can start your day with intention. Completely makes a big difference. Uh, spirit animal. Oh, <laughs> spirit animal. Yeah. 
a dolphin for Ooh, sure. Oh, why? Um, because they're super social. Um, what? I like <laughs> they it. hang out I like in packs. It. They talk a lot. They <laughs> seem like they laugh a lot. I mean, yeah. And um, they're the only mammal that mates for pleasure other than humans. No, I like that too. Right? <laughs> and um, they're just, I don't know. They're so cute. Yeah, they're so cute. I love the water. Yeah. Dolphins. I love sure. it. Love it. Uh, what would you think your superpower is? Ooh, love. Oh. Yeah, I know that sounds like kind of cheesy, but I, this is so silly, but I love doing like these like uh, feedback, I don't know questionnaires, interviews with people in my life, mm -hmm. and I interviewed a guy I dated, and I asked him, I was like, what's the greatest thing about me? Like, that to me is like the superpower part, mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, that you love people in a way that other people are left inspired to love a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. My roommate also said that about me, like, I remember writing this really sweet letter about, you know, I just one day wish to love as hard as you do, and I'm like, yeah, that's my superpower. Love. I agree. When I choose it. But she love. is so lovey with everybody. Um, what advice would you give to your 16-year-old self? 16 oh and teenage, teenage years for girls are struggle is fucking real. Yeah. So what do you wish you kind of would or wish you would have had or wish you would have known then? That maybe would have made that path maybe like a little less painful. <laughs> yeah, like, baby, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's nothing that is wrong with you. I, like, think about it and I'm like, God, these girls, like, I know me when I was that age and I just completely wanted to be something I wasn't all the time blonde hair blue eyes tall skinny and I'm like the exact opposite of that and I think back to that girl who was 16 and like baby you are beautiful everything about you is awesome the way that you love people the way that you're like down for whatever the way that you just like you know like just want to live your life and be bop around like and you know like as I grew older like that little light just kind of like you know, started to dim, mm -hmm. you know, because I let other people tell me, like, you know, what was great or bad about me or whatever and mm -hmm. influence that. And now looking back, I'm like, man, just run with it, girl. Just be you. <laughs> yeah. Like, accept yourself. Yeah. Quit trying to be someone you're not. Oh, gosh. I think every, every teenage, probably every teenager for sure needs to hear that, but especially teenage girls are so influenced by what's around them and you, you know it's that whole youth is wasted on the young you know thing mm -hmm. where you look back and you're like girl if I could have just grabbed you and hugged you and been like you're so awesome keep where, going yeah wear that two piece girl cause yeah, you're well, awesome you are like, a rock you know um I think that's so awesome so that's it but let's share share with everybody share with the wellness posse What's coming up for you? Where they can find you? What's next? You know, what to look for coming from Meg. Woo! Okay, so I'll tell you what's coming up, guys. Um, so if you look, um, I think on my About Me, there's a link to Women Lifting Women. Go like that. And, um, man, I'm super excited and scared all at one time to share with you guys. We are bringing a Women's Summit here to Austin. Um, I saw there was a need for it. We have a Texas Women's Conference that's awesome, but it's just so overwhelming. There's like 300 speakers or something crazy like that. So what I'm bringing here is this like intentional wellness, mm -hmm. really. And I'm going to have, it's going to be September 22nd. We decided on a date. We have some really amazing speakers that are going to be there. And it's all about um, listening to who you really are, like your authentic voice. And stepping into that leadership because it's needed. Like, your leadership's needed. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like for you, it's needed. We just need you to be your biggest self-expression of yourself mm -hmm. in this world. Because that's why you're created. Yeah. Because there's something that you can bring to this mm -hmm. table that no one else can. And it's our responsibility to, like, lean into that, that um, leadership. So often did I just go, like, not being responsible for the leader that I really am. Mm -hmm. And... You ladies, I mean, whatever it is, if you think it's as, like, 
small as like being a mom, dude, we need some strong ass moms in this world. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, just that. So I'm like super excited and really scared. I don't know what I'm doing. She's so she's gonna do amazing. Come. <laughs> Like help me. I uh, welcome any <laughs> advice. Yeah. If you wanna if you wanna volunteer for Meg, she can use some help. Yeah, for sure. Event planners, anybody? Have a cool space to have it at? Yeah, we're looking for a venue. Yeah, you wanna donate wine? I mean there's all kinds of things. You got something to give Meg, you let let Meg know. Yeah, well it's definitely <laughs> No, I thought, hey, give me free stuff. No, no, no. Uh, we wait. want you to be involved. Yes, Everybody exactly. Has gifts. And Meg mm -hmm. is doing something amazing. I know a lot of people want to be a part of it. So any capacity that you'd like to be a part of it, just come join us, sit for the day. If you want to help out, if you want to do whatever. Like I believe in community mm -hmm. and um, this is all going to be driven through community, by community. And like, look, we want you to be spotlight. We want your, like, whatever it is that you bring to the table to be like a place where, a platform where you can be showcased. That's really what it is, yeah. Well, thank you, lovely. I love so you. Lovely. Thank you. I love you, Pam. Oh, yeah. it's been so fun. Yeah, so Friendship. fun. Do you want to say hi? Oh, come here. Look how cute this little dog is. Oh, my gosh. This is oh, crunchy. Oh, oh, my God. Look at that face. Oh, I <laughs> love it. He's so cute. Okay, well, thanks, guys. And I'll see you later, Wellness Posse, later this week. And Wellness Posse uh, Wednesday will be next Wednesday. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much, Meg. Thank and you for having we'll me. talk to you soon. Kayla, okay, bye. You. Bye, okay. guys.